Hi and welcome to this bonus video from Game Creation and in this video I'm going to answer uh, a question that I've uh, been asked in the comments which it's always worth asking questions in the comments um, and this has been a really fun one actually I've, I've never done this before so it's actually really really fun for me to, to answer um, today's video is about scrolling like in Mega Man and I've, I've picked the uh, first Mega Man um, but the, I think the scrolling is pretty similar across uh, especially the legacy ones um, so let's just have a look and see what I've created and then I'll talk through the code about how I did it so let's move this out of the way okay so Mega Man's walking along this is like the boss scene here and this this works across the game so um, when Mega Man falls down a pit then it, it does the same scrolling so as soon as Mega Man touches the end here he scrolls into the boss scene and it's actually quite a small <laughs> a small boss area but we're not worried about proportions so much and if we load it again and this is the bit everyone does <laughs> no one no one walks into that thing they always jump into it and the scrolling works absolutely perfectly so I'll talk through how I did it. Um, I've cheated a lot with this. I don't want to spend ages on the tiles. So if I go into the frame editor, uh, you can see that actually I've got a massive backdrop of just this gray color here to just give us a bit. I don't think white ever looks very good. Um, so I've just put a little bit of a gray on it. And then what I've done is just copied all of this um, out of the uh, first Mega Man game. So I've just copied all of that and that's just a background. Now you might be thinking, how how do I do the platforming if there's a background there? Well, again, I've cheated and I've put an active on the ground here, just one pixel if I go into it. It's one pixel height, so you barely notice it. If I run it now, you can barely notice it along here. But that's the actual platform. And it, it's a bit dodgy doing that in games because um, when you've got one pixel height, um, you, you do find that you can clip through it quite easily. Um, but for the purposes of this, uh, I'm not actually making a making at man game, um, so it's absolutely okay. And I've got another one down here, so you can actually bounce about in the in the boss bit. Um, these bricks here are just four bricks, and then what happens is when you touch any of them, it then destroys them in turn. For the one that's created, all I've done is I had uh, animation of it getting created. I kind of had the idea of actually doing that after I did the first bricks. I probably should have done that with these ones and just had an animation. I could have used the same one and just reversed the animation, but I kind of didn't think about it at the time. And then when I wanted to create um, one coming in, then I thought, actually, let's just do an animation of it. That's way easier. OK, so let's get into the nuts and bolts of actually how it works. Oh, and by the way, I've put qualifiers for each of these um, so that if Mega Man touches any of these, so with the apple, um, then it will trigger the animation. So first things first, um, the virtual width is just this bit up until here. So that's 782 pixels and then 480 is the height of that this frame. But I've kept the um, virtual width down so that you can't see. So you won't be able to walk up here and see this bit. Whoops. And see this bit here. And that's important because if I run the application, I don't want it to keep scrolling here. Um, there are multiple ways of doing that. I could say keep um, frame centered on Mega Man up until this bit here and then stop. Uh, and actually that's what I've done for the next scene. But actually it's just easier just keeping the virtual width down. So let's have a look. Um, this bit here is just the platforming. It's just if Mega Man touches the one pixel high platform, just stop and the other one which is in the boss area just stop that's pretty self-explanatory um, if now I've used global value a as my kind of um, data center I don't often use global values for that I'll create an active and um, use the alterable values of the active but again I, I knew I wasn't making a huge game here so I just used global value a for this and I've said if global value a is zero basically that means that we haven't started the the, the um, scrolling so we're, we're not focused on Mega Man going to the boss area so just center it at Mega Man then if there's a collision between Mega Man and any of those um, 
objects here. So remember all of those objects have the apple qualifier. Um, then set global value A to 1. So that stops that scrolling then. Um, and stop Mega Man. So just make sure he doesn't clip through those objects, which I think he can actually in the actual game. Um, but I've decided not to let him in this one. Then as soon as um, A is greater than 0, so as soon as Mega Man touches that gate, then I change his movement. Now if I go into Mega Man's movement, I've actually set up two oh that one there. I've actually set up two movements. You've got movement zero, which is the platform movement. And I haven't used the physics object because I think it's just I wanted to keep things basic. Um and I've set up a secondary movement which is just static. That means Mega Man would just not be controllable at all, which is ideal because when he's going through that transition, I don't want him to move left and right. I want him to be absolutely still. I've also changed the animation sequence to stopped because if he was jumping um, it would show the walking animation, um, which uh, then he carries on walking as as he's supposed to be stationary. So I've said, no, he needs to be stopped um, during that transition. Okay, so this is the complicated bit here. Basically, I'm using global value A as a bit of a counter to, um, to cre create that animation, create that scrolling animation. And I've said every 20 milliseconds, that A is above zero, I want to add one to the global value A. So this is a counter, one, two, three, four, five, etc. The first bit will be destroying the, I think it's the bottom of the gate that gets destroyed first. Let's have a look. Yeah, so it's the bottom of the gate that gets destroyed first. Then 20 milliseconds later, the next, then the next, then the next. Then when it gets to six, so when the gate has been destroyed, what I want to then do, and this is the complicated bit here, I want to keep adding on to the center, uh, to the um, where the um, scrolling centered, but the virtual width, remember, wouldn't let me see the um, boss area. So I need to extend the virtual width now. Um, I'm controlling the, the centering of the display elsewhere. I'm not worried about um, controlling it with um, where Mega Man is anymore. So what I want the um, scrolling to end up with is at 782 plus half of the frame width. Remember, it will always center, so we're always looking at where the center of the scroll is. If I have a look here, that point there is 782. And what I want is 782 plus half of the screen area, which is around here. That's where I want it to be centered so that we don't see anything before 782. So 782, we don't want to see anything to the left of that because you shouldn't be able to see the entry um, area here. So we want to scroll it up to here. But I don't want to do that straight away. I don't want to just jump it to there. So if I just literally said, uh, where is it here? If I just said, right, do that straight away, it would just suddenly jump there. I want some kind of transition. So what I've said is if global value A is 6, or greater than six, so these are all being destroyed. Every one um, millisecond, I don't think that is millisecond, I think that's centisecond, but anyway. Every one of those, um, we're gonna add 10 to the scrolling area. Now that, how did I come up with 10? Well, basically it's just trial and error. I just tried different numbers and actually 10 was a nice scroll. Um, some of them were too quick, some of them were too jumpy. So if you put this as, um, every five milliseconds jump a um, hundred it would be really jumpy it wouldn't be a nice scroll and actually if you look at the um, Nintendo original um, it is quite a jumpy scroll um, so I want to improve that slightly okay so that's that's gradually adding on 10 duh, 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 until I want that to stop when I've reached 782 now be careful here the temptation is, well, if it's less than 782, then when I hit 782, then we stop. That's never going to work because I'm adding 10 each time. Um, it might not be 782. It might jump over that. So always make sure you say greater than or equal to just to cover your bases in case some logic here, it just jumps over 782 um, so that it doesn't like break the game. <laughs> so this second thing I've done is Mega Man. If you have a look again, 
if we have a look again, not only does the screen scroll, but Mega Man also scrolls. Not very much, but he does scroll into the position here. Okay, so this second bit is all about making Mega Man scroll. So if the X position of Mega Man, I've worked out that I want Mega Man at 820 pixels uh, from the left. I want him there. So I've said if he's not there, then keep adding one every one millisecond. Keep adding one to his X um, position. So just keep adding one until he's there. And only when he is there do we start the game. Now, you might think, okay, so we've got the scrolling correct. So the X left frame basically is, if I show you here, X left frame is the X position of this bit here. So when we start out, it's zero. But as soon as we scroll a little bit, that'll be about 10 now, 20, 30, 40, okay? That's what X left frame is. And um, so when when the scrolling has happened and when Mega Man's in the right position, uh, I set global value A to minus one because I want to stop all these things happening because that says if A is greater than zero. I don't want it to center display. So A is zero there. I don't want it to go back to zero. I don't want it to be greater than zero. Um, so I just put it to minus one, that's easy. Um, center the display, so here I'm checking to see, I'm saying, well, okay, if you overshot the margin a little bit and you were a little bit over 782, that's not a problem because I'm just gonna fix that here because I want it at 782 um, to be the bit on the left. Okay, so, so that sorts that out. Then I also create the final um, door, so the, the animation door, and I don't need to do anything to that because that, if we go back, that one there is already set up to do that animation, so I don't have to do anything. Now, something I noticed in testing this um, is that if, uh, if I show you here, when Mega Man got through the door, if you held left, he could actually sneak back behind the door, which is really fun. I love testing stuff and finding stuff like that. So what I originally had here was, right, okay, let Mega Man walk again. Um, I disabled that, I said no, no, Mega Man can't walk yet because he can actually sneak under the door. So what I've said is that when the animation of that door is over, then let Mega Man move again. Um, this last bit is just to stop him um, walking out the door. So it's the collision between him and the second door um, so that he can't walk out. So he can try, but he can't. So he's blocked from walking out. Now, he can actually just walk to the left here. Ah! <laughs> but as I said, I'm not making the final game. I wouldn't ever use a massive graphic like this and sort of secret um, one pixel high platforms because that's just asking for trouble. Um, always make platforms really thick um, so that Click Team has um, some hope in stopping you clipping through them because uh, your users will not thank you if they can clip through your... Um, your platforms. I think that's me done. If there's anything I've missed out, please um, ask them in the comments. Um, this, as I always say, is not the only way of doing this, um, but this is a way that my video on Friday has really kind of um, shown the versatility of scrolling, especially when you focus on the X. If you have a look here, um, I've used it here. Um, I probably, in, if I was making this game, I probably would never have center display at that uh, just basically all the time i would i would want more control over that and here's the bit here where i've said no i want more control now i want some logic here um, and i want to be able to create an animation with it um, and so you know the result is actually pretty good um, if you've also noticed that um, when i've looked at here that's actually really small so what i've done is i've gone in here and this is something i don't normally do either but I've said um, to resize it. So I've actually stretched it. But if I de-click, if I unselect that and play it, um, sometimes it stretches it out horribly and this looks hideous. So what you do is you just click fit inside and it just means that uh, if I if I deselect that, I'll show you how small it is. <laughs> I was panicking a little bit that I'd made it way too small. I'll deselect that one as well, even though that doesn't make any sense. See, it's tiny, you can't blim and see it. Um, so if you're wondering why this, the pixels are quite small and yet it shows up quite large, I've just clicked those two. I don't recommend that because it it's, it's better to draw the things at the right size, but 
it's doing doing fine so that is how you do scrolling for make man in click team fusion thank you very much for watching this video if you want to see more from us please click subscribe we release videos every single weekday at 7 p.m uk time thank you